Today, we are going through something super exciting that I've been working on for a while. And it's this little beauty right here that you see on the screen now. It's basically a custom designed Raspberry Pi hat, basically stands for hardware attached on top. Now I've been using Raspberry Pi hats a lot, but never had the opportunity to design one myself. So I thought, why not try? So I don't know everything about how to program the EEPROM and things like that. So I'm working on that still. But in this video, we are going to go through the PCB design and the PCB design requirements for designing your own custom Raspberry Pi hat. So let's get started. Before we get too deep into the nitty gritty of the design, I want to take a moment to thank a fantastic sponsor who helped bring this physical board to life. A big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They offer PCB manufacturing and assembly services with quick turnaround and competitive prices. You can upload your Gerber files directly, choose your board specification and get an instant quote. Don't get hung up on choosing the color of your PCB, there are many options to choose from. They support a wide range of options, including multi-layer boards, flexible PCBs, and assembly for both surface mount and through-hole components. PCBWay also hosts a shared projects community, where designers can share their work and browse open source projects. It's a good resource if you're looking for inspiration or reference designs. So once again, thanks to PCBWay for supporting this channel and sponsoring this video. You'll find a link in the description if you'd like to try them out for your next project and get a bit of a discount for yourself. I also share my projects on the PCBWay community page, so you can check out my projects there too if you want to order them for yourself. Now, back to the video. So what I'm going to do is show you how I started this project first of all, and then we'll go into the details. But before we do that, let me just quickly talk about what the project is. So the hat that I've designed for uh, my Raspberry Pi is a digital to analog converter for audio so it's got two um, audio output jacks so one is line out and one is a headphone output i've also added a microcontroller on top of the board as well and this is to convert um, old school midi so uart to um, usb midi for the raspberry pi so it should be able to take in messages from other devices and then send them over to the Raspberry Pi or the other way around as well. On the board itself, we have a PCM5122. So that is the main kind of center point of the PCB. And that is our digital to analog converter. So it takes the digital audio signals from the Pi and converts them into a clean analog signal. Obviously we'll look at the quality and everything once I get the board up and running, which I haven't been able to do yet, but I'm getting closer. Uh, PCM5122 I know is a very popular choice for Raspberry Pi DAX so I think we'll be okay obviously we need to make sure I get my PCB design right as well um, just to get the best performance out of the chip there are some higher quality parts that we could have used but we can explore that further if we have success with this board let's rephrase that when we have success with this board now the big plan for this board is to pair it with the media synthesizer that I've shown you on my other videos so that's the mallet instrument. So obviously I wanted to learn music and I've designed some audio amplifiers and things like that on this channel before. And this board will just add to the bunch and basically help us develop our knowledge in terms of getting good clean audio out. So let's first start off with setting up the project for a Raspberry Pi hat in KiCad. Well, KiCad makes it surprisingly easy especially when you're working with Raspberry Pi hats and even Arduino boards. So there are some awesome templates that come like pre-packaged with the KiCad software that give you a head start and basically pre-populate some of the bits for you in terms of the schematic and the PCB design. So I'm just going to show you that now before we actually go into my schematic and my PCB design. So when you're trying to create a Raspberry Pi hat project or a custom board for an Arduino, what you want to do is go to File, New Project from Template. And if you see over here, you've got a bunch of template projects. So you've got Raspberry Pi hat. You've got your various different Arduino options. So Arduino Nano, Uno Shield and things like that. So if you wanted to design your own shield, you could do so. Got a micro hat as well. So a smaller version of the board that I've designed. You've got a STM nuclear board. So a attachment on top. So obviously you've got a bunch of different options that you can explore over here. For this case, obviously we are using the Raspberry Pi hat. So what I'm going to do is click on that board 
and then it gives you a bunch of text over here to explain the project and what it's trying to achieve. At some point in my tutorial series, I will show you how to set up your user templates yourself as well. Uh, so make sure you follow for that. Now on Raspberry Pis, we generally have a 40 pin header and we want to attach to that in order to get our digital signals to the board that we are designing. And the 40 pin header is always configured the same way on Raspberry Pis. So we're just going to use that as our input to the board. We can also use the five volts from it as well if you want to do power everything from there. What I've done on my board is powered everything from the USB side. So anyway, there's a bunch of description over here if you want to read that and what the board looks like. So press OK on that and you can see it gives you a save option. So I'm just going to call this test project and save it. And now we have basically created our template project from KiCad. So if you go into your schematic editor, you basically get a pre-populated board like this. So you've got your 40 pin uh, socket over here with all the pinouts already labeled for you. You also have a recommended EEPROM that generally is required for auto setup of the board on Raspberry Pis. And this EEPROM needs to be a certain size for the Raspberry Pi to auto detect what's connected to it. And it contains um, basically the ID of the board for the Raspberry Pi to read. There's also this comment over here and it's very useful. Um, so you, if you go to this website, it'll tell you pinouts for specific board projects. So there are DAX on there as well, and which is what I've tried to follow. So that is your schematic template. If you go into the PCB design side, you can see the template has also set up a PCB outline for you with the 40 pin uh, socket over here, some mounting holes as well in the right locations. You have a optional, you can delete this basically, a uh, slot for your camera. You have a optional slot as well for your display with our 40 pin header connecting to the Raspberry Pi. Camera slot, display slot, and the four mounting holes. It also tells you where the USB connectors and the RJ45 connectors are on the Raspberry Pi, just if you need it as a reference. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to set up a project using the templates for Raspberry Pi and we'll be doing a similar project for an Arduino uh, shield as well. I'm planning to do a sensor board, so temperature, pressure, things like that on a Arduino shield so that it's basically a learning project. But we'll now let's get back to the main project. So. I want to go back to my Pi deck that I've designed already and I'll show you the schematic for it. In terms of sheets, I have three sheets, but you don't really need to worry about the microcontroller or the um, headphone amplifier for this because I want to focus on the Raspberry Pi DAC option. So again, this is the 40 pin socket from the template and I've added my pinout table um, that was on this website over here. And that basically shows me what I need to connect for my DAC. In this case, that's PCM5122 that you see over here. I've also got two regulators and they are basically powering the digital and the analog separately. And the hope is that um, having separate regulators will reduce the noise on the analog side and basically produce cleaner sound. We also have the EEPROM over here, so I've not changed anything on this. So as I mentioned, the center point of the board is the PCM5122. So this chip is basically doing all the digital to analog conversion and it gets its digital data from the PCM line which is over here and this interface is called I2S. You've got your left right clock which is this uh, line 23 over here. You have your data in and you have your main clock over here. Obviously you see I've added jumper pads over here because I wasn't sure if we'll need to use this or not. From my understanding I think we just need to use this one over here. So just in case if we need to use pin 20 then we can basically connect up this jumper. There is also a I squared C connection on this uh, chip and that's basically I think to control like mute and volume um, and I've connected that to a secondary I2C on the Raspberry Pi. So you can see the IDSDA and IDSCL goes to this EEPROM. According to this comment we shouldn't connect anything else on this I squared C channel. So there is a secondary I squared C channel on the Raspberry Pi and that's basically pins 3 and 5. So that's why I've connected to this, just in case we need to use it, but I don't think we will. We don't need to mess around with the addresses or anything like that, um, just because there's only single chip on this board, and we don't need to mess around with the GPIOs. The analog output for the left and the right channel is from pins 6 and 7 respectively, and you basically need a low pass filter on the output channel, and this is basically what's recommended on the datasheet. 
so I've not messed around with uh, the circuit design too much but you can um, fine tune these things uh, for specific use cases obviously. You need a lot of decoupling capacitors on this part just to get cleaner audio and then um, there's a bunch of capacitors down here and this one I think is a internal uh, regulator and basically this is to stabilize that. Got soft mute as well. So the design itself is very simple. Um, I've basically taken most of it from the uh, datasheet recommendations. So very important, just read the datasheet for any component. And generally speaking, you'll have a good idea of how to get it working. Um, it might not give the best performance, but we'll test that out. Now, if you go into the PCB design side, you can see I've got my headphone amplifier over here. So out of the way, takes the line out from the PCM5122, which is this chip over here. And that goes to a audio output socket and goes to my headphone amplifier as well. So this is the PCM5122. This is the microcontroller that I was telling you about. And that basically will take in MIDI and I'll put audio. There's a USB-C um, power input. And what I'll do is basically connect that up to the USB on the Raspberry Pi just because I want to power it through here in case I wanted to use it separately to the Raspberry Pi as well. So then that will allow me to do so. This is the EEPROM that's required for Raspberry Pis and there is a very complicated process to program them up, which I still need to do for my board. And these two parts are the regulators, the 3.3 volt regulators. The microcontroller has its own regulator down here. The headphone amp has its own regulator down here. And the digital and the analog uh, power channels on the PCM5122 are powered by separate regulators as well. So let's have a look at the design on this. So you can see I'm using a four layer board just because there isn't a massive cost difference between a four layer board and a two layer board. Layer two is a solid ground plane. So I've tried not to put any tracks on there at all, which is this green layer over here. And on layer three, I've routed most of my power and then some tracks as well. So you can see um, the 3v3 for the digital is down here. The 3v3 for the analog is basically this um, zone over here. And on this side uh, is the power for the microcontroller and the rest of it is ground. So basically try to keep a relatively uh, solid ground, but I did include uh, the power rails on there. The blue layer is also almost a solid ground plane but I did need to route some tracks on there in order to get uh, finish my layout. I'm hesitant to call it a ground plane really, just because there's some big cuts through the middle. So I'm slightly worried about that. Hopefully it doesn't cause any noise on my board, but um, I think that was the only way I could finish the board design. It's relatively solid in terms of the ground. This socket over here is the programming for the microcontroller. So that's it really, a quick tour of a custom Raspberry Pi DAC hat. This project for me was a learning experience because I've never designed something like this before. And um, there's still a lot more for me to do, but I wanted to show you the design I've done. And if you have any feedback for me, if you've done a similar design in the past, please let me know, especially if there's an easier way to program up the EEPROM. So obviously as soon as I work it out, my next step will be to share in a future video how I got the EEPROM programmed. So we can finally test this on a Raspberry Pi and try to get some sounds out of it. That would be amazing. So I hope this gave you a good introduction to designing Raspberry Pi hats and also introduced project templates on KiCad, which can be very helpful, not just for something like this, but for having your own template set up. Let's say design rules from PCB way are pre-populated. So you don't have to basically do that every single time. And you can have like certain parts of your boards already configured. You can have your net classes and things like that already pre-configured. So you don't have to worry about that all the time. If you enjoyed this video, obviously give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more electronic projects. I am still working through the KiCad tutorial series and I have many more videos to go on that to show you how to get the most out of KiCad. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.